anyone who has a child who is fighting for breath, it's terrifying because it, it's out of our control. One baby is born every two minutes into toxic air in the UK due to 29% of hospitals being located in polluted areas. And London has the highest rates of pollution in the country. Esme, my beautiful little girl, she started um, having breathing difficulties at around three to four months old. We were surprised at how um, badly her breathing was affected. At around five months old, she had her first kind of major attack. It kind of just, yeah, really scary because it was almost like when you're listening to the breathing and just hoping the next one comes, hoping the next one comes. Newham Council has the worst levels of air pollution in the UK and exceeds the World Health Organization's recommendations. We have got really strong evidence that air pollution is harming health in children. My colleagues from Imperial published a study just within the M25 area and they followed thousands of pregnancies and the ones, babies that were born into really polluted areas were much more likely to be preterm. That means that you're bringing immature lungs into a very polluted environment right from the start. Imperial College London has also found that children born into disadvantaged backgrounds have a greater risk of asthma persisting into adulthood. Asthma is uh, an inflammatory condition where you, you get this huge re reaction from your immune system when it comes into contact with something that it detects is uh, putting your body under attack. Esme has bronchiolitis and symptoms of asthma, which David believes is a result of air pollution. Understanding that um, air pollution and traffic pollution is a trigger, then we have to keep her away from that as much as possible. There you go. David and his family have adjusted their lifestyle by avoiding heavy traffic areas and investing in a cargo bike. In London, we know there's a particular problem with air pollution. There have been a number of measures taken, including the expansion of the ultra-low emission zone, but we're still in a situation where levels of air pollution are toxic, and we don't think that's good enough. We do need central government action to introduce bolder clean air laws so that we can have air quality in line with World Health Organization levels. In a statement, the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs said, We are continuing to take urgent action to curb the impact air pollution has on communities across England through our ambitious clean air strategy and the delivery of our £3.8 billion plan to clean up transport and tackle NO2 pollution. It's made me want to change things. It's made me you know, campaign as I have done to, to not just protect you know, my, my children, but all the children of London, because I don't really see enough taking place. Jem O'Reilly, BBC London.